The next application I'd like to open is called Notepad. So once again, I'm going to come down to my Start button. In Windows Vista or Windows 7, I can simply type Notepad. and then press Enter. In Windows XP, you need to go to All Programs, Accessories, and select Notepad from there. Now, as you can see, this is very similar to the calculator. It has a title bar, it has a program icon, and currently it says Untitled slash Notepad. This is important because this is showing us that while we are in this particular program called Notepad, Currently, we have not saved a file, so it's just called Untitled. But because you can save Notepad files, it has to put a file name here. Until it's formally saved, you'll often see things like Untitled or Document 1. If we move over to the right-hand side of our window, we again get to see the Minimize button. But this time, our Maximize button is also active, and I can see that by moving my mouse over it and watching it change color or get shaded. When you maximize a window, you make it as big as the screen will allow. So I'm going to give a single left click on that. And you can see now that the desktop is hidden and Notepad is taking up as much room as it can. This is usually the way you want to work. What you also may notice is that my Maximize button has changed. Now it looks like two little overlapping squares. These buttons will toggle back and forth, if you will. When your window first opens in a moderate size, then this is the Maximize button that we just used. When it's maximized, it changes to something called the Restore. And if we click on the button at this point, it puts it back to its intermediate size. So the Minimize button will always be Minimize, the Close button will always be Close, but the button in the middle will toggle back and forth between Maximize and Restore depending on what current state it's in. Earlier I told you that we could move the calculator by dragging the title bar, and that's still the same with the notepad. But what you will notice that's different with notepad is if we move to any edge, my mouse cursor changes from the white arrow to a double-headed arrow. With the double-headed arrow, you can manually resize a window. So if I move up and get that double-headed arrow, press and hold my left mouse button, and in this case drag up, I can make the window taller. If I move to the right edge and get the double-headed arrow, press and hold my left mouse button and drag to the left, I can make it more narrow. This actually works on any edge of a resizable window. The calculator was not resizable, but Notepad is. Here's a little extra trick for you. If I move to a corner, I get a little diagonal arrow. And guess what? I can do a two-for-one using this one. If I have the diagonal arrow on a corner, I can press and hold, and I can both resize the width and the height at the same time. So this can just save me an extra step if I know exactly what size I want it to be. And again, once I get it to the size I want, I simply release my left mouse button, and that becomes the new restore size. At this point, if I were to maximize or minimize, and I'll go ahead and minimize it, then I'll move down to my taskbar, and click on the button to bring it back, you can see that Windows always remembers the last restore size that you set. So you don't have to worry about having to resize it every time you use it if there's a particular size you like. Windows has a memory, and even though you don't formally save it, it actually will remember what the last restored size was. In the calculator, we also saw that we had some menus. And the same is true here. I can move up to the top of my screen, and I can see a few more. In this case, I have a File, Edit, Format, View, and Help menu. We looked at the Edit menu in our calculator, and I can look at the Edit menu here, and again you'll see that there are some similarities, like Cut, Copy, Paste. Most of the time, every application will have an Edit menu. Things like Undo, Cut, Copy, and Paste are universal things that are available in almost every application. Most often, they will be found in the Edit menu. So this is one of the commonalities you'll find. You will also notice that there are keyboard shortcuts listed on the right. So again, you can begin memorizing this if this is something that you want to use. One other item that I have in Notepad that I didn't have in the calculator can be found along the right edge and along the bottom edge. Some windows will have these two areas, and they're called scroll bars. 
Right now they're grayed out because I don't have anything in this document yet. Scroll bars only become applicable when the size of the file is either taller or wider than will currently fit into the window. Now in order to show you how this works, I'm going to do something very quickly. It's not very elegant, but you'll get the idea. I'm going to type the letter A and then press Enter. And I'm going to do that over and over and over again until I get so many A's that I actually am starting to run off the bottom of the page. Now just so you can see it a little bit better, I'm going to start typing some different letters. You can see that as I'm typing, the window is actually now scrolling. And I can't see all of the A's that were at the top of the page. What I can see, however, is that I now have an active vertical scroll bar. If I move my mouse over the scroll bar, I have a couple of options. At the very top, I can click the up arrow to scroll one line at a time up in the document, or I can click one time on the bottom arrow or the down arrow to scroll back down. The gray bar that you see here is called an elevator button, or sometimes called a scroll button, and the size of it actually depends on the size of the document. Since this is a very short document, the box itself is big, meaning that it's showing us a larger area of the document. If this was a 50-page document, the size of this bar would be much smaller, so it stays in proportion to the length of the document. What's important is that I can press and hold my left mouse button, and while holding the left mouse button, I can drag up and down to scroll the window. So I can drag it all the way to the bottom, or I can drag it all the way to the top. Now in this short document, that may not be a big deal, but imagine that you do have a 50-page document. There, moving 10 or 20 pages at a time is going to be a lot better than using maybe your keyboard shortcuts of page down, page down, page down, time and time again. So here you can see that even though this is very similar to the calculator, we have a little bit more functionality. In addition to the features we had in the calculator, we also can use the Restore button and the Maximize button. We can resize the window. We have some additional menus, and we also have scroll bars. With that, let's go ahead and close Notepad. And because we type some things in here, it wants to know if we want to save them. I'm going to say no, don't save. 